In this video, we're going to introduce the process of diagonalization. So recall that in the last video, we found that we introduced the concept of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and we found that we can express this in expression using this matrix form. And then we found that we can solve this equation in order to find the eigenvalues. So by solving this, if we're, let's say we're dealing with an n-dimensional vector space, then we will find our roots to this equation, which will be which would have n roots, so that would correspond to our n eigenvalues. And for each and every single one of these eigenvalues, it would satisfy this expression. So let's say we're dealing with the ith uh, eigenvalue, and so it would ex satisfy an expression like this. So you solve this equation, you find your eigenvalue, and then you, will, you can plug this back in, and then you can find what your eigenvector should be. And then note that your eigenvector, if I, your eigenvector should satisfy this expression over here, and you can see that if I multiply both sides by a scalar, I can just move the scalar to the inside. And then you can see that for whatever eigenvector that you find uh, corresponding to this eigenvalue, you can see that I can always just uh, scale that vector with whatever constant uh, you want, and it will still be a valid eigenvector. So the eigenvectors themselves are not unique. So if you have an eigenvalue, and then you find your eigenvector, for whatever eigenvector that you find, you can always multiply it with a scalar and scale it to whatever uh, to something else that you want. And it will still satisfy this relationship, as you can see over here. So the eigenvectors are not unique. So this, this is something you should take note of. So uh, now we're going to begin to introduce the concept of diagonalization. And that is, we're going to take our matrix over here, T, and then we're going to change it into a matrix that looks something like this. It's going to be a matrix where the diagonals will be equal to the eigenvalues. And then everywhere else, it's going to be equal to 0. So let's introduce that uh, process over here. So let's say we have an n-dimensional vector space, and then uh, we will have our n eigenvalues. And then for all these eigenvalues, it will have a corresponding a that satisfies this relationship over here. So for lambda 1, I have a1. For lambda 2, I have a2, and so on. For lambda n, I have a n. And each one of these will satisfy this relationship. So t a2, lambda 2, a2, and so on. So one way to kind of uh, summarize all this information over here, to summarize that for each and every single one of these eigenvalues and eigenvectors that they satisfy this relationship, I can actually combine everything into one single matrix expression. So I'm going to put t multiplied by a1, a2, all the way to a n. So you can see that this is actually an n by n matrix. So note that each and every single one of these, these a1, a2, all the way to an, all these are n by one column matrix matrices. So standalone, they're all n by one column matrices. And if I combine them all like this, you can imagine the columns dropping down. I'm just not, uh, I won't, uh, I won't fill in what those columns would be, but you can you can imagine that this would be an n by n uh, square matrix. And then this would be equal to the right hand side would be lambda one a one lambda 2, a2, and so on, all the way to lambda n, a n. And once again, this would be an n by n matrix. So once again, you can imagine the columns dropping down with all the individual terms. So this will be an n by n matrix. This will be an n by n matrix. So all I'm doing, I'm not doing anything special over here. All I'm doing is that I'm taking all of the information offered over here, namely that these a1, lambda 1, a2, lambda 2, that they all satisfy their own corresponding relationships. And then I'm just summarizing all this within one single giant block of matrices. So that's all I'm doing. This is just a summary of all the information offered over here. So on, uh, I'm going to try to rearrange this a bit. So on the left hand side, I have this T. And let's say this matrix, I'm just going to call this matrix X for convenience. So on the right hand side, left hand side, I have TX. And on the right hand side, I can, I can change this to A1, A2 to AN multiplied by this matrix. So this is going to be a matrix where the diagonals are equal to the eigenvalues and everything is equal to zero. And you can check that if you multiply this over to the to this matrix, which is x, you can see that you can you can reproduce this result. So all I'm doing is is that I'm not changing this uh, I'm not changing the uh, this relationship uh, this expression at all. All I'm doing is that I'm just splitting up it, it into two separate matrices. So you can see that this is x, and this is going to be the diagonal matrix 
that we're going to be interested in. So let's call this uh, d for the time being. So we have x d t x. And so you can see that we can find d by taking the inverse of x and then multiplying to tx. And so there you have it. This is the process of diagonalization. So you can see x is a matrix where all the columns will be the corresponding eigenvectors. And then using this matrix, you can take the inverse, multiply it to the uh, transfer, uh, your linear transformation matrix t, and then multiply it by x again. And then you will get your diagonal matrix. And notice that here, since I'm taking the inverse, I'm implying that I can, the, uh, uh, an inverse does exist, does indeed exist for x. And you can see that this is only possible if all these n solutions are unique. So sometimes uh, there may be repeated solutions where, let's say, lambda 1 might be equal to lambda 2. This is called a degenerate solution. And if that is the case, then uh, it, will be a, it will not be possible to diagonalize your matrix like this. It's because the matrix will not exist. So that is also something you should take note of. So all this sounds very abstract. Let's try to explain this with an example. So recall the last time we were dealing with an example where t is equal to this. And then uh, we found that our lambda is equal to, to 1 and negative 4. So let's say lambda 1 is equal to 1, lambda 2 is equal to negative 4. And so the corresponding a1, uh, you can just substitute everything back into the expression t a lambda a. And then you can solve a system of linear equations. You'll find that uh, a1 can be equal to 3, 1. And then a2 is equal to 1, 2. So you can try this out yourself. I'm not going to show you how to arrive at this. It's just a matter of solving a linear system of linear equations. And you can see that uh, I can actually multiply a scalar to this. So I can actually let a1 be equal to 6, 2. And it will also work because, as I mentioned before, you can scale your eigenvectors however you want, and it will still be an eigenvector. But here I'm just going to use the simplest form. So 3, 1 is obviously easier to deal with than this. Uh, than 6, 2, so I'll just deal with 3, 1, and 1, 2. So x, by what we've defined over here, is going to be a, in this case, 2 by 2 matrix, where the columns will be equal to a1 and a2. So our x is going to be 3, 1, 1, 2. And then according to our formula over here, we can take x, uh, x inverse x, uh, tx to find our diagonal, diagonalized matrix. So let's try, if, try to see if that's possible. So let's find the inverse first. So we need to find one over. We need to find the uh, determinant. So one over three times two, which is six, minus one times one, which is one, and then we just flip the order of three and two, and then put a negative sign over here. This is just a standard procedure of finding an inverse, and so we can just substitute this expression over here. So x minus one that's equal to one over five, two negative one negative one three, and then for t, I'm just going to substitute this over here and then x we have 3 1 1 2 and then now we can try to multiply the matrices together if our proof here was indeed correct we would expect that this final expression here to be equal to the diagonal matrix and in our case uh, it will be equal to 0 0 uh, 1 4 so let's see if we get something like this make it 4 so let's see if we can verify this uh, verify this theorem over here. So now we need to multiply this matrices. So multiplying this, you get 4 minus 2, that's just equal to 2. Negative 2 plus 6, that's 4. Negative 3 plus 5, uh, negative 6 plus 5, that's equal to negative 1. And then here we have uh, negative 12, 3, 1, 1, 2. And then multiplying this together, you get 6 minus 1, that's 5. You get 3 times 4, that's 12 minus 12, that's 0. We got 2 minus 2, that's also 0. And then here we get, here we get 4 minus 24, that's negative 20 then. And then don't forget we have a 1 over 5 over here, so we get 1, 0, 0, negative 4, which is exactly what we would expect. So the, here you can see that this is just a demonstration of how this, uh, how this theorem works. So this is the process of diagonalization.